Aperture 120 light is quite possibly the single most popular light on YouTube. It is in use by tons and tons of YouTubers. There are literally thousands of videos about it on YouTube. And, you know, rightfully so. It is a very good light. It is a very bright light. It has a very high CRI, color rendering index, and it is a relatively low cost product. For what it is, it's an affordable, reasonable, fair price. But as you can imagine, in the world that we live in, there is always somebody coming after the successor. And in this case, that company is Pixel. A company called Pixel, manufacturing a light called, unfortunately, simply the Pixel LED, has a product that is going after the Aperture light. And I don't say it's going after it because it's kind of a similar light that's got kind of similar specs. It, 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 it's a blatant knockoff. And I'm not a huge fan of that. In fact, I'm not a fan of that at all. I really wish that the company had designed something different. Instead of just copying every curve and line from the Aperture light, you know, just, just make your own. But that aside, what we want to talk about is what's inside and what you get out of light because that's what matters the most. Now, today I've got one of those lights right here. This is the Pixel LED that's lighting me now. Right next to it, I have an Aperture 120T. That's the tungsten version. We'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. And I'm going to compare them eventually so you can see the differences or not see the differences as the case may be. And they're both being pumped into identical Godox P120L Octaboxes. That's a 48 inch Octabox. It's big, it's soft, it's beautiful. I absolutely love this light combination. And we will switch over to the other light in a moment, but for now, I just wanna look at the specs. So let's start with the price, because that's kind of important. The price of the Aperture 120, the Mark I, the original one, was about $650. Now, there's now a Mark II out that is actually a bit more, $750, and the Mark Ones are now available for about $550. So you've got a range between the Mark I and the Mark II of about $550 to $750. The Pixel Lite is actually $500. So it's not that much less, especially compared to the Mark I of the Aperture Light. It's only $50 less. And so your first thought might be, well, why would I get a knockoff light for $50 less? It's clearly not worth it. Spend the 50 bucks more, get the better light. Okay, that's fair, but, but we're not done yet. Uh, incidentally, the Aperture 120T, the tungsten light, which is actually the one I'm using here, is on sale for only $300. Now that is a real bargain, no matter what you decide after watching today's video about the Pixel Light. The Aperture 120T at 300 bucks is a steal. That is the Mark I, and I guess they've got a warehouse full of them. Maybe they just really didn't sell that many, and so they're selling them at a discount. So as long as you know how to white balance, it's a great light to have. Anyway, the color rendering index, the CRI of all the lights is about the same, uh, as well as the TLCI, which is another way to measure the quality. The CRI and TLCI of the Aperture Mark I and the Mark IIs are all at 96. For the Pixel Light, it's a little bit higher, 97 and then 99 for the TLCI. Now look, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't have a way to measure this myself. I can't say whether there is actually a difference or even whether those measurements are accurate. I don't know. But we'll take them at their word for now and what really matters is what we see on camera but that's the numbers that we see on the specs. Noise, noise is a big issue. These lights, the aperture lights, have always been heralded as being very quiet and they claim to have an 18 decibel rating when the fan is on. That's quiet, that's great, that means you can use them on a film set. The Pixel LED light also claims to be quiet. In fact, it's called ultra silent, but there's no number given. So we will listen to it on the bench. We'll hear what it sounds like. I've used it a bit and I've listened closely and you can certainly hear the sound of the fan if you put your ear up to it, but it is not a loud fan by any stretch of the imagination. So now let's get into the last spec that I have on here and that's the light output. And this is where the real differences are. The Aperture 120 Mark I, the original one, has a spec output of 14,000 lux at half a meter. That's the measurement from half a meter away from the light, 14,000 lux, okay, great. The Mark II version of the light is measured at 30,000 lux. So it's got twice the lux, which I think it's not a stop, but I, anyway, it's, it's a brighter output light. Great, we always want more light. So similar light, better build quality, fully redesigned, et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 everything they talk about it's got 30,000 lux versus the 14,000. The Pixel Light, however, is advertised as having 66,000 lux. Now I put a light meter down, I put a gray card and measured between the two at full brightness, and it is a full stop brightness. That's what I'm measuring by putting a gray card right where I'm sitting now, double arms reach away from the light. If I put a gray card here and I do an exposure reading, I can get a one-stop difference between the two lights. And that's pretty significant. So now that $500 versus 
$550, one stop difference, well, that's a lot of light. $500 being the lesser one that's actually putting out more light. So that's really interesting. That makes a huge difference. That allows you to put the light farther away or diffuse it through a larger panel. There's a lot of things that you can do with brighter light. So brighter is definitely better here. Now let's turn off one light and turn on the other one. The pixel and the aperture both come with remote controls. So I'll turn off the pixel and on the aperture. And the aperture is a tungsten light. The white balance for this light is currently set to daylight. Let's go ahead and move that over to my custom white balance setting for the aperture light. And this is what we've got. Now, obviously the shadow is gonna be different because the lights are in different position, but overall they are both a very nice quality of light. But what really matters here is the output. The aperture is set to 55%, while the pixel light was only set to 15%. Both lights at 55 versus 15% putting out the same amount of light. Again, same distance to subject through the same diffusion panel and the exposure on the camera, of course, has not changed either. So we're seeing a dramatic difference in the light output between the two. Okay, th that's enough of specs. Let's take a closer look at a light, at the light itself. Let's just get it up the bench here. Okay, that was weird. Incidentally, if you're still here, <laughs> subscribe. Yeah, you know how it goes. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, all right, onward. So this is the light that was there. It, it, it's the Pixel, that's what it's called. And it does actually have another model number on it on here, the Photoville C220. Excellent, anyway, it does look, um, it's very recognizable, isn't it? That looks kind of almost exactly like the aperture light, but whatever. Uh, there is one significant difference. The control panel is here, which on one hand, is quite convenient. You've got your control panel right on the light where you would kind of expect it. But on the other hand, quite often you put these lights up really, really high and the aperture light actually has its control panel on its power supply inverter, whatever the heck you call this part of it. This one is just a huge power brick, which incidentally does come with a little cage and a big Velcro strap. So you can hang this wherever it needs to be. The actual plug that plugs into the light is locking. So that's very nice. You snap that in and at least in theory, it is. And at least in theory, it's not going to come out. You have to push it all the way in the first time. And then all your controls are here. So again, on the aperture, because they are on the power brick supply thing, that means that that can hang down low if you've got your light up high. You don't have to climb a ladder. In fact, I kind of forgot that and I just climbed a ladder to make a change to the aperture light and then realized that's actually on the thing down. Anyway, so that is a, a very nice feature. The remote control that it comes with, it, it's, it's cool, but I will say it's a little bit weird in that this actually can be powered on and off itself. The, the remote itself can be turned off, which you would think it would just turn itself off. And I came in one morning and the blue LED was on and so it had been on all night and the battery was showing almost empty and it barely worked. Now, I turned it off and then after a while it was kind of back to powered up. You know how batteries do that sometimes, kind of weird, but it's just one of these little uh, pen, uh, what do you call these, CR2025 batteries. And that's annoying because it means that when it dies, you can't just pop in some rechargeables. But to be perfectly fair, the aperture light uses the uh, control, uses the same type of battery. And one of my aperture remotes is dead already as well. So I guess I can't really complain about that. That does seem to be about the same. There is a temperature control on here and there is a temperature display on here. Now this particular model is not a temperature tunable. It is a 5600 Kelvin daylight balanced light. It's just a little bit odd that you can change the color temperature on here, but it doesn't actually do anything that you have a color temperature display, which I guess it's good to show you what it is, but you can't change it. So that's a little bit weird, but whatever it just tells us that they're using the exact same casing control and everything else for their different lights. So they, I guess, make a color temperature tunable one as well. But let's take a look at the interface on here. Power this thing on and it does have just grabbing the knob on the back, a very nice comfortable knob to go from 1% and then to crank through all the way up to 100, which is really, really bright. So let's just back that back down to uh, maybe just 1%, which is still quite bright. You have on here the ability to change the group and the channel for the remote control. So you get all of that on there. So you can have multiple lights put on different channels from your remote control. You could control multiple lights by switching the channel on here or just have multiple remotes, each one controlling different ones up to you. I do like this feature. There's a button both on the back and on the remote that allows you to jump through brightness in 25% increments. So that is a pretty nice feature. I do appreciate that, the ability to jump up in big increments quite quickly. 
You can do the same, as I said, from the remote, but you can then also adjust the brightness on the remote with the dial. Now, one thing that's a little bit finicky about the dial on the remote is it's a bit difficult to get it precise. It feels like if you move it just a little bit too fast, it jumps forward quite a bit. So if you wanted to get it to say exactly 20, I might have to go a little bit slow, kind of one at a time to get there. Whereas if I kind of tried to knock down to it, I might overshoot it, undershoot it before I got it. It's a little bit touchy, but you know, these are really picky details here. Another feature like the aperture is the ability to force the fan to come on. This allows you to force the fan if you need to quickly cool the light. And now that I'm listening to it, it is actually quite a bit louder than the aperture. I don't have a way of measuring the decibel readings on here. The aperture one, I honestly wasn't even sure that it was spinning when I forced it on, put my hand under the fan. I could feel the air moving. You can actually see it through the vents, but it is very, very difficult to hear. I've got a little bit of ambient noise in this room. There's a fan from the neighbor's business that I can hear right now. I could not hear the aperture fan. This fan, however, is definitely more audible. Now, I'm not gonna say it's so loud that it's gonna mess up a shot, but if sound is absolutely critical, if you need perfect silence, then this may not be the best light. However, it is not bad. So you can certainly have that on and I think you'll be okay for most situations. It is a Bowens mount, just like the aperture light. Comes with a standard the reflector here, snaps right on. This is the one that it comes with. I think this is the one, it, not this one, it comes with one just like it. I've got a few of these laying around. But being a standard Bowens mount means that you can attach any number of modifiers to it, like the big, huge Octobox that I had earlier, a beauty dish, or really anything that you want that you can find in a Bowens mount. That'll work on there. The arm on here is a little oddly stiff when you loosen and I'm getting really finicky here but when you loosen it up it's a little bit weird you feel like the rubber grommet in here is get kind of bunching up and you kind of got to loosen it more than you should to move it but you know again I'm being really really particular if this was the same cost for the same brightness output than the aperture I would definitely say just get the aperture if it was a $50 difference as it is between this and the Mark I of the Aperture, I would say get the Aperture, except that this one is twice as bright as the Mark I, a full stop difference. And it is, whatever the math is, 50% brighter or something than even the Mark II. So it is a significantly brighter light, and that does make a huge difference. And that is the one real reason that I would say this is a very good choice. Now, if you don't need that much light, if your situation means you don't need it, and even in the situation that I had set up there, I was only using it at 15%, so you could argue, I don't really need that much light there. But you know how it is, when you have it, you'll find a way to use it. So if you've got that kind of brightness, then you can pump it through a bigger diffusion panel. I could put it through something much bigger and still get enough light out of it, which would be pretty nice to be able to do. So if you want a lot of light, do check this one out. If you're not needing that much light, you're more concerned with build quality and you want something that's going to last for a long time, I think you, the Aperture has got the reputation and it just feels like a better built light overall. But again, for the brightness, I, I'd probably get one of these. Well, that's everything, folks. What do you think? Do you think this light is worth saving a bit of money, getting twice the brightness, but buying into a brand that is maybe a bit questionable, you're not so sure about, you don't really know, uh, aren't familiar with? I, I will say what's kind of funny. So the, the brand on here is Pixel. Um, I just bought a wireless remote control for my camera so that I could start and stop recording on this camera here. A and it turns out it's also from Pixel. Go figure. So I guess they have more products out there than I even realized. This is my first introduction to them. Oh, maybe this was my first introduction and I didn't realize it. But they're here. They're making some products that are uh, interesting. Definitely very, very bright. It is that same chip on board design as the Aperture. So I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Just let tight for the part in my heart. Feel it deep in my gut. It's a thing I should be after. Yo, just the tight. The part in my heart